Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney. It's Monday, August 31st. Yes, it is the end of August already. Time continues to fly by. We have your top headlines from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Thank you so much for being here to get filled in on everything that's impacting you in Northeast Ohio. We will welcome back our 3 News sports analyst, Ben Axelrod, today. We'll be talking about the trades Cleveland baseball is making what just went down shortly before noon. Also, how Drew Carey is helping out a local camp that he actually worked at in the 70s. Let you know what you need to know about the latest text message scam that's going around, which I personally also received a message from. What the CDC is saying about what employers, what companies should do when they're confronting people who don't want to wear masks. Also, shocking news about an Ohio State football player being shot in the face over the weekend. A death in Portland during protests and the passing of Chadwick Bozeman. And that's where we'll start right now. Over the weekend on Friday, Chadwick Bozeman, 43, died four years after being diagnosed with colon cancer. And the entire country was shocked about this because it's not something that he had spoken about publicly. So he passed away on Friday with his wife, Taylor Simone Ledward, and his family by his side, and then a statement was released about his passing. People in the entertainment industry were absolutely shocked. The Black Panther director, Ryan Coogler, said that he was not aware of the illness of Chadwick Boseman. Here's the statement that he released. After his family released their statement, I realized that he was living with his illness the entire time I knew him. Because he was a caretaker, a leader, and a man of faith, dignity, and pride, he shielded his collaborators from his suffering. He lived a beautiful life, and he made great art. Day after day, year after year, that was who he was. He was an epic firework display. I will tell stories about being there for some of the brilliant sparks till the end of my days. And that was just one tribute. Obviously, beautiful words from Black Panther director Ryan Coogler. Chadwick Boseman starred as the Black Panther, the King of Wakanda in the Black Panther and appeared in other Avengers movies after that. Did you also know that Chadwick Boseman played a Cleveland Brown in draft day where he was a top draft pick from Ohio State? So that is his Cleveland tie and of course an incredible performer. He had so many iconic roles. He played Jackie Robinson. He played Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall. He played James Brown himself. So lots of people coming out, sending beautiful tributes to the family of Chadwick Boseman after he was taken unexpectedly to the public world on Friday from colon cancer. There was also a death in Portland over the weekend during protests. This was at the same time that there was a pro-Trump rally happening and also a clash with counter demonstrators. This was on Saturday night, so police are now investigating a homicide. They say they are still investigating the circumstances around that. The man who died was wearing a hat with the insignia of Patriot Prayer, which is known as a far-right group that has clashed with protesters in the past. That's according to New York Times reporter Mike Baker. President Donald Trump is blaming the mayor of Portland for the violence. However, Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler blames President Donald Trump for what's happening and says that he has created the hate and division that we're seeing in lots of places right now. Mayor Wheeler of Portland said the tragedy of last night, he said this on Sunday, the tragedy of last night cannot be repeated. It doesn't matter who you are or what your politics are. We have to stop all the violence. This is, of course, after Jacob Blake was shot in the back multiple times by officers in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and then Kyle Rittenhouse, a 17-year-old, is now accused of shooting and killing two people. Kyle Rittenhouse of Antioch, Illinois, who is accused of killing the two people, is accused of doing so by showing up in Kenosha, Wisconsin, in support of police. Here in Columbus, over the weekend, an Ohio State football player was shot in the face. Haskell Garrett was shot in the face just before 12.30 a.m. late on Saturday. Police found a shell casing and blood in the street when they showed up and did identify that the victim was 22-year-old Haskell Garrett. He was taken to Ohio State University's Wexner Medical Center, and he is in stable condition and is expected to recover. Police have not yet released any information on a suspect or potential motive related to that shooting, but Haskell Garrett is expected to recover. So we're definitely thinking of him at this time. 
Now we'll be bringing in our three news sports analyst, Ben Axelrod, to talk about what's happening with Cleveland baseball. The trade deadline is today, and they are making some moves. So we'll let you know what's happening with that as soon as we get Ben Axelrod in here to let us know what's going on with all of that, recapping things and what kind of moves Cleveland baseball is doing. Let's bring in Ben right now. Hi, Ben. Thanks for joining us here on 3 News Now. Hey, thanks for having me, Stephanie. First of all, welcome back. First day back after the birth of your son, Sonny. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, it, it's been a crazy couple of weeks here at the Axelrod household and uh, back at work today and, and off and running here uh, with the MLB trade deadline. Yes, exactly. Well, congratulations to you and Tori. We look forward sometime in the future to saying hello to Sonny. Uh, yeah, yes. let's talk about what's going on. So what's the big thing that happened today just before noon with Cleveland baseball? Yeah, so just about uh, just before you went live here on, on 3 News Now, um, the Cleveland Indians made a big trade. They dealt Mike Clevenger, starting pitcher, to the San Diego Padres. It was him and outfielder Greg Allen, who's actually been playing for the team uh, the last couple of weeks in the Indians outfield. They trade him to the San Diego Padres. They get back six players, a mix of guys ready to contribute at the big league level right now and minor league prospects. So um, heading into today's trade deadline here at 4 p.m., Mike Clevenger was one of the bigger names uh, being mentioned. As of yesterday, I mean, it, it was all but guaranteed that he would be traded. And uh, here we are just before noon, uh, finally with that deal with, with Mike Clevenger heading to the San Diego Padres. There was some conversation, I believe we had uh, some reporting up that it was possible he might go to Chicago. So why do we think that he ended up going to the Padres? Better deal for Cleveland? Yeah, you know, it, it was Mike Clevenger is a guy, he's a really talented pitcher um, and, and pitching is always in high demand, especially in the middle of a season here, just one month to go until the playoffs here in this shortened season. So he's the type of player he's um, under contract for this year and then he's under contract for next year too. So he's a guy who's going to be appealing to just a lot of teams. There's a lot of teams who are going to be in the market for a Mike Clevenger type of player. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the Chicago White Sox, uh, the Toronto Blue Jays, the New York Yankees, the Atlanta Braves, and, and of course the San Diego Padres, they had all been linked to him. And um, as far as why it was the Padres, it, it's tough to know without seeing what other teams were offering. But um, when you look at what the Indians got back, it, it, like I said, it is that mix of guys ready to contribute at the big league level right now and minor league um players and, and guys who you can kind of fill up your farm system with. Um, I, I don't know if nobody's really looking at it as a, a home run deal for the Indians. There's not really that one piece that you look at and you say, okay, this is the one guy they're getting back. This is who the trades built around. It's, it's kind of a, a um, combination of all the guys they're getting. But um, like I said, this is going to be the, the type of deal that the Indians were looking for is guys ready to contribute right now. And also guys who could contribute down the line. So I think this will be something that people are probably thinking about or talking about a little bit today. Does the Clevenger trade happen if he doesn't break the COVID-19 protocol on that Chicago trip? What do you think? Uh, I think it does happen. Um, you know, the Indians heading into 2021 next year with all the financial ramifications of of the COVID shortened season, having no fans in attendance, the loss of revenue, it was going to be tough to pay Mike Clevenger the salary that, that he's going to make in arbitration next season. So I think he was always a name that, that kind of made for just a natural fit as far as guys they were going to trade. They still have Shane Bieber. They still have Aaron Savali. They still have Zach Plesic, uh Tristan McKenzie now, who, who's been up now for a couple of games and has looked impressive in his first few starts with the team. Starting pitching is a strength for the Indians. So I think Clevenger always made Made sense as far as breaking the, the COVID protocols a few weeks ago, though. Uh, I think that almost set it in stone, though. I, I think that kind of put the Indians in a position where they were ready to move. It probably sped up the process as far as them talking to other teams and, and getting the, the ball rolling on this deal. So, um, I don't think this trade you know happened because of the COVID protocols and, and everything that happened a few weeks ago in Chicago, but I do think it kind of made it all the easier for the Indians to, to say goodbye to Mike Clevenger. All right, before we let you go here, one more question about the trade deadline today. What are we thinking? Shortstop Francisco Lindor, are we hanging on to him? Yeah, you know, I think they will keep Francisco Lindor. I, I think it just, with the way this season shook out with the COVID um, shortened season, and, um, you know, they're in first place right now. So to, to trade Francisco Lindor right now would really kind of throw the talent 
on the season. Um, I, I do think it'll be interesting to see if they're done, though. Um, they might not be done. They, they might make another trade. They might send it, uh, get another back at another outfielder. So um, they might not be done just yet. But um, yeah, I, I think Francisco Lindor at the end of the day, I think he'll remain a Cleveland Indian and uh, that will turn all eyes to, to the offseason and whether or not they deal him before the start of the 2021 campaign. All right. Well, we got a couple more hours here, so we will be watching your Twitter feed at Ben Axelrod to see what is going on with Cleveland baseball in this trade deadline today. Thank you, Ben. It was great having you back. We heard Sonny in the background a little bit. Yeah, I bit. think you can hear him right now. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing him soon. Thanks, Ben. All right. Thanks, Stephanie. Bye. That was our three new sports analyst, Ben Axelrod. Great to have him back after he took his time off after the birth of his son, Sonny, getting us all filled in on what's happening with Cleveland baseball with the trade deadline today in this shortened Major League Baseball season. Now let's move on to what the Centers for Disease Control are saying to companies if they're confronted by people who don't want to wear a mask. And this has nothing to do with health and safety protocols. It does have everything to do with escalation because we have seen these situations where these videos get very popular on the internet. We see people coming in not wanting to wear a mask. There being confrontation between employees and the people who come in and aren't wanting to wear, wear a mask for whatever reason that is, whether they have a medical exemption or not. So the CDC is saying, walk away. They are saying that you want to look for signs that a person might become violent or aggressive if they aren't wearing a mask and they are confronted by an employee or someone at a business. And the main thing to do is to de-escalate a situation, offer physically distant options to that person, post signs with advance notice of mask policies. If you're not in a place where masks are mandated in public, of course, here in Ohio, masks are mandated statewide because of an order from Governor Mike DeWine and the Ohio Department of Health, and for these companies just to stay consistent with enforcing protocols, but above and beyond all, if something feels like it's going to escalate, to walk away. That's the guidance that's been released by the CDC. Common sense guidance there, but always a good reminder to let people know that we shouldn't be taking matters into our own hands, and de-escalation is very important. While tensions are very high right now for a lot of reasons, in our country. Here's something that might be stressing you out, and this is something that I recently received. There is a new scam going around on text messages that will tell you that you have a missing package. I've gotten several of these texts, and I can tell you personally, it is a bit confusing because where I live, we have recently moved to a system where you do get a text message if you have a package because we have lockers where you receive packages where I live. Well, there's a text message going around that reads, Stephanie, we came across a parcel from April owed to you. Kindly assume ownership and schedule for delivery here, and then there's a link. Well, if you click on that link, it'll take you to what looks like maybe a FedEx or what looks like maybe a UPS site, and then it will ask you for your personal information, and then you have given that personal information to a scam artist. Another thing that can happen if you click on this link is it can download malware or spyware onto your phone and hack into your personal information that way, logging keystrokes and things like that. So be aware of that. This is the latest scam that's going around via text message. It's a very personal point of content. So point of contact, excuse me, to get a text message. It's not like an email where we're used to necessarily seeing these scams. So be careful, be vigilant. Also, experts recommend, tech security experts recommend, do not reply to that text message. As tempting as it might be to send a reply back and say, I know this is a scam, I don't have a package, don't contact me, you have just now let whoever is on the other line of that text message know that there's actually a real person at that number where they can reach you and then your number has just become that more valuable to whoever it is that's trying to scam you. So resist the urge, do not reply. All right, now let's talk about something that Drew Carey did over the weekend. He donated $5,000 to Camp Wynoa in Green after he was tweeted asking to help them with a fundraiser because they've had to make cutbacks related to COVID-19. So he tweeted it and he wrote, I'm about to donate to this cause. It's to help a summer camp I worked at in the late 70s. If you can, please join me. And he donated $5,000. Well, Alexis King, the digital media and communications coordinator for Camp Wynoa, said that a an alum of the camp already matched Drew Carey's donation and other people who have no ties to the camp 
have been donating. Over the weekend, they had reached at least $15,000 in donations. Their goal is $50,000. So Drew Carey worked there as a, a counselor in the 70s. And King, who is the digital media and communications coordinator, was trying to get a hold of him. And she tweeted at him. This is the beauty of the internet sometimes. So she tweeted at him because she didn't have any way of getting in touch with him. And that's how it went from there. He posted the tweet and called out for people to help with supporting those donations if they can. So if you are able, we do have a link to make that donation if you would like to participate in helping support Camp Wainoa. In the video that was tweeted at Drew Carey, the team talked about how they were forced to make extreme financial decisions and cut things back due to the pandemic. So that's what they're working on. That's what they're collecting the donations for. And of course, they say every little bit helps. And before we let you go here, one more reminder, we are now 64 days out from the presidential election happening on November 3rd. So here's your reminder that you have to get registered to vote by October 5th if you are participating in the election. If you want to vote by mail, you need to send an application in ahead of time. And then once you send that in, you'll get a vote by mail ballot back. You need to send that in as soon as possible because there's lots of conversation happening right now about delays with the U.S. Postal Service and how we are expecting here in Ohio up to half of all votes to be cast by mail. So get it in, get it in early, track your ballot, make sure it's arrived so you can feel confident that your voice is being heard. Also, if you are planning on voting in person, you can do that early. Here in Northeast Ohio, you do that at your county board of elections. That starts October 6th. So that's the day after the registration deadline. You can go vote in person early starting October 6th. It's Monday through Friday, except until a couple weeks before the election, then they extend those hours and they open up some weekend hours as well. So keep that in mind. That's it for your three news now, early update for Monday, August 31st. I'll see you back here at 3 p.m. when we get the new numbers in from the Ohio Department of Health and the rest of the things that are topping the headlines here at WKYC.com and our WKYC app. I'll see you back here in a bit. I'm Stephanie Haney.